Hey you! Oh my goodness, was I caught off guard or was I caught off guard? I have had so much fun in the past week with these seed pods of my Dendrobium antenatum and I wanted to share that with you and I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you so much for being here. Why was I caught off guard? This orchid has been inside since the temperatures have dropped at night now for over a month. And I walk past her every single day, so the seed pods are in my face. Well, orchid seed pods normally, normally need a time frame of 9 to 15 months to ripen, depending on which orchid type you're looking at. This is the first time my antenatum has produced seed pods and... Well, I was thinking by spring I could harvest them because these seed pods were created in the middle of summer. I watched the deed happen. So I'm thinking, you know, summer, July, all the way through. I was thinking, well, April 2024 should be fine. And then suddenly, one day it was just a little bit too breezy in the indoor grow space. And I had like a snow globe effect all around my space. It was magical, but I was thinking, where is this coming from? <laughs> and then I just saw the source and seed pods had popped open without me even recognizing the fact that they had ripened because I wasn't expecting them. I do have two that I can salvage, but you know, the golden rule really is when you've got orchid seed pods, you don't want them to burst open because it can contaminate the seeds, pathogens and all that stuff can enter them and then it's very difficult to germinate. It just complicates the germination factor a little bit more. But I have two that haven't popped open and we're going to harvest them. And you know what else? <laughs> I guess my eyes were distracted by the three spikes that were growing at a time of year when they weren't supposed to be. So that was wonderful. I've got the honeysuckle fragrance. There is so much going on with this orchid at the moment. It's just insane. Now, because I don't often go in and cut seed pods open, this for me is a treat. And I'm going to go and get myself a cutting board and a knife. And we're going to inspect orchid seed pod from its interior and see how the meat Millions of seeds, I mean millions of seeds, are clustered in together. I hope you're up for that. And in a way, I just want to try it one more time and see if there's even more coming out of the one that is burst open the most. This is incredible. I can't believe it. We're talking less than six months for a seed pod to ripen. Look at this. Just a minute. I'm cheating. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, I've had so much fun. What I want is to show it to you. Look at how much is coming out. The leaves are covered. Everything is covered up. Now, I don't want to spoil these because I want to show them to you. But here's another one. Loaded. Watch this. Woo! <laughs> Isn't that incredible? It's like a snow globe. I love it. I'll be right back. I do feel as though I'm wasting all this goodness, all these potential orchids that we could have growing, but I do not have the facility nor the capability of germinating these seeds. So we're going to enjoy what they would do in nature and just have a little bit of a geek out moment when it comes to the inside of a seed pod from a Dendrobium antenatum. It's so Sweet of you to stick around. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had your orchid seeds burst open. Have you ever had orchids produce a seed pod for you? If not, well, let me tell you something. Take a very sweet smelling orchid into the great outdoors. Keep an eye on it though. Keep it in your line of vision so that you can see if a pollinator is coming and moving from bloom to bloom, then you know it's a crossed with self. Otherwise you won't know if the pollinator came from another bloom. And I was a little bit disappointed that so soon my blooms were yellowing and so many of them were yellowing because I love this orchid. 
But because she's such a proliferous bloomer, I just thought, hey, it's okay. As long as you touch my antenatum, I'm absolutely okay with that. I'll share some blooms with you. But early in 2023, a pollinator did that to my Cernua. <laughs> and I thought, no, 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 not this time of year. I want all the blooms of my Cernua. Anyway, I also am going to harvest the two seed pods that have not burst open. And I'm going to store them and I'll show you how I do that. You see these two? They're still nice and green and they are closed. This is how they should be harvested. Green and closed. And then of course now, note to self, if this happens again in 2024, I will know that it doesn't take more than six months for the antenatum seeds to be ripe and then I can harvest them before they burst. But my form of storage, what I do is take a baking sheet, the wax paper, and then I make a little bit of a pocket with it. Okay, so the wax paper is ideal because the seeds won't stick. Because whoever were to receive these seed pods, by the time they get to that person, they would have burst. That means they could stick to any other kind of paper, including plastic. And plastic also, there's a risk of condensation, which this is easy with wax paper. The seeds, if the seed pod has burst open, they will just slide out very, very easily. They won't stick. So. Let's get one seed pod into a pocket. Then we'll go to dissecting. I've changed my mind. I'm going to get these off so that nothing happens while they're still outside. <laughs> I feel so bad. All the wasted little orchids that are here. All the orchid potential that is not going to happen. Oh my goodness. Yes, I do feel so bad. Name of the orchid and the date harvested. In you go. And then I, you know, I double fold it, double fold it until it gets all the way down to the seed pod and then I tape it up again. <sighs> the baby is in there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's have a look at one that burst open. Still so many seeds in here. Here comes the wind. This is what they do in nature. They burst open and then everything gets floated around, distributed, and in the hopes that some of these seeds will land on terrain or something that will induce germination. And then we have baby orchids growing. Or you can do it in a lab and germinate them that way in a very, very sterile environment. You see, the sterile part is super important to avoid any funguses from developing. Funguses? Fungi. Sorry. <laughs> any fungi from developing. So this is, even though there is good seeds in here. Oh, look at them. I think it's so pretty. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but this is so, so pretty. Maybe let me blow on it. Oh, look at this. Oh, my head is spinning. All these orchids. Oh, my head is spinning. There are seeds everywhere. <laughs> I'm not even going to wipe them off. I'm just going to see if the wind will deal with my antenatum. Now let's cut one open. That has burst, but you could see by the ones that were open the longest already and how everything had dispersed, you could see that there's still going to be plenty in here. Oh my word. Look at this. I'm so sorry, but I can't stop. I can't help myself. I love it. I really do. You know when you do your Christmas decoration and you get glitter all over yourself, over your hands, your face, <laughs> clothes everywhere, dogs. That's what's happening at the moment. <laughs> There's seeds everywhere. Snow glow, 
I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to take off my cutting board and make it into a darker background. Now, theoretically, I could also put these in bags and then have, you know, somebody maybe germinate them. But seeing as they're burst open, it would take a very qualified person to sterilize them to get them to germinate without any fungi developing in the container. But we're going to have some fun. This is such a rare occasion for me. I have two that are viable. Uh, do, do I want... Mm. It's such a pretty bloom effect. I don't want to cut it. Here they come. Let me get rid of the cutting board so you can see against a dark background. Goodbye, babies. Goodbye, babies. Goodbye, babies. Oh, anybody watching that has a love, I'm sorry, your heart is probably going, don't waste them, don't waste them. Seeing if you have a lab or if you want to do this and you want these seed pods that I've just packed away, let me know. Send me an email. I also have Cernoa seeds. Okay, last one. It's pretty much the same all the way from here on in. <laughs> Oh, but I'm like a child. I'm like a child. <laughs> I love orchids. Oh, look at this pocket. Watch, watch. My goodness. So pretty. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I am such a geek and a child when it comes to things like this. I find it all just magical, just magical how nature works, what they do, and the blessing it brings us to learn and observe, and I get completely carried away. I hope that you saw something new and <laughs> covered in orchid seeds. <laughs> not complaining, not complaining. Yeah, I hope you saw something new if you've never seen that before. And I hope that it brought forth the same reaction that I have had and you got a good little smile out of this one as well. Oh, by the way, I did a complete pollinating video back in the day. I will link that in the description. And I discussed how to do it, how best to do it, what blooms to use, certain risk of using blooms that are not exactly ideal. All of that information is packed in that pollinating video. And I hope you have fun with it in case you find yourself in a situation where you have an orchid with lots of blooms and you want to try it out for yourself. Meanwhile, nature did the deed for us this time around and it was a wonderful experience. So thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate your time. I wish you a beautiful day on that condition, though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.